Hi and welcome to the series of 3D modelling tutorials for Form Z. My name is Belinda and I'm a postgrad student and a lecturer here at Art and Design. Within this series of tutorials you'll be learning all the basic skills you need to prepare your own 3D print and in this first tutorial we'll be learning how to get set up within the Form Z program and how to make a few basic shapes. So this is your interface here. On the right hand side you'll see um, these items here for workspace. We want to definitely be working in the one, the modeling workspace, which is this guy here. Uh, you don't need to worry about any of these other three, so just make sure you're always working in this one for 3D printing. If you happen to lose any of these palettes, if one of them disappears or you can't find your tools, um, don't worry, just come up to the top here at click on workspace and go down to reset all workspaces and you press OK and everything will return to normal. So before we get started on some of the tools, the first thing you want to do is set up your project settings. So if you come here to File and scroll down to Project Settings, we want to make sure that we're working on uh, the correct scale. So we want to change it from Building down to watch, about the size of a wristwatch, because we'll be working um, on a smaller project, which is limited by the size of the 3D printing bed. So we make sure that guy's on watch and set to millimeters here, and then we say OK. Uh, you might also at this point like to save your file, so we say file, save as, and you can call it my first 3D print, whatever you like, put your name in there, and we say save. So to begin, we're going to be looking at some 2D drawing tools. Forms that uses vector lines, which are the basis of all 3D modeling programs. We will be using these two tools here on the left. Um, when you click on a tool, you'll see over here that your tool options can change. Before we make a 3D form, we're going to make a 2D form. So you just want to make sure that for the moment, it's set to 2D here and not any of uh, these guys. Um, but we will be coming to them later on. So make sure it's on 2D and we'll be using these drawing tools here. Okay, so the first thing we're going to want to do is draw a 2D square in the very middle, looking down from the top on our 2D axis. There are two things that influence the view of the plane that you're looking at. One of them is the buttons up the top here and the other is the views down the bottom on the left hand side here. Currently we're in the isometric view. These buttons at the top affect how you make the shape and how you view it. You can view the plane from the top, the bottom, the right, the left, back, and the front. And these will become more clear after you make an object. We're going to want to make sure we draw our square in the center of the plane. To do this, we want to go up to the coordinates and type in 0, tab 0, tab 0. And that will put our mouse right in the center of the plane. And then we click Enter. So now we're going to have a look from the top view. And you can see that either you can drag your square to the dimensions that you like or you can enter them in numerically here. We're going to choose 80 by 80 and we click tab 80 enter. There it is. On the left hand side here we're going to click the derive tool. If you want to drag a palette away to continue using the options you can just click the top bar there and drag it into your workspace. Within the derive tool we're going to select the extrusion option which is this guy here. We pick that and then we pick the object we want to extrude. With your extrusion tool moving up and down the z-axis you can do this either dynamically or numerically as we did before. So numerically we can do this by entering a number at the top in the height coordinate here and pressing enter. 
Now we have extruded our drawing to a cube that is 80 millimeters high. Now that you've made your first 3D object, let's have a look at the way the views affect the way the object appears in space. Here it is from the top, the bottom, right, left, back, and the front. If we return to the isometric view, you can use the set view tool to toggle around your object from any direction. If you click down the center of the mouse or select the hand tool, you can shift the entire plane. Select your pick tool again to explore some of the other options. On the right hand side underneath the tool options palette, if we click this little arrow, some other palettes pop up. Underneath objects, you can see that currently our cube is named Object 9. It's a good habit to get into to name your objects to keep track of everything on your plane. So we can double click this here and name it Cube. And just press OK. Under the objects palette you can see these small symbols a ghost and an eye. The ghost symbol allows you to bring previous objects back to life and the eye shows you what is currently in view. If I click the eye here on our cube it disappears and if I click the ghost on object 8 you can see our 2D form from before. So for now let's get rid of our cube to have a look at some of the other drawing tools. You can either select the cube by clicking on the object itself or under the object's palette by clicking on the named object here. So to delete our cube, we can select it and press on the keyboard, delete. Now that we've deleted our cube, let's have a look at some of these other drawing tools. Let's return to the top view to do 2D drawing. On the right hand side here, we click this tool if you hover over it, it allows you to look at multiple options. We can draw lines with a single segment or multiple segments. Single segment line does exactly as you'd expect. If you click and drag a line and click again, we have a single segment line. Click delete, get rid of that guy. The next tool along, the V-Line tool, allows you to draw lines with multiple segments. We can click anywhere we like. The fantastic thing about Form Z is that it allows you to toggle between tools while you're drawing. So if we hover over here and we decide we want a curve, we can go to the point spline tool here, click a point, drag, and make some curves. When we're ready to finish our object, we can hover over this, the initial point there and click, and we're finished. If we return to the isometric view, we can see it on the floor of our plane here. We can extrude this object similar to the cube. So we return to our derive tool, select our object and extrude it up. Beautiful. Now that we've extruded our objects, I just want to show you a number of ways that we can view this on the plane. Currently we're in the shaded option. If we click this button here, we can have a look at the wireframe tool. This is really useful for later on when we've got multiple objects and we want to see what's behind or underneath our current object. This option here allows us to see the object without any lines, just as a shaded object here. Later on, we'll be using this button that will render the object and calculate all of the shaded areas, but we can't work in this, so we'll have a look at that later on. So in this tutorial so far, we've had a look at how to set up our workspace, name our objects, we've use the pick tool and the line tool and we've extruded some shapes and lines that we've drawn ourselves. In the next tutorial we'll have a look at how to draw objects and use the revolve tool.